In this video, we are going to find out what scope means in the context of Google Analytics and dissect how incoming page views are processed into the hit, session and user scope. All and more coming up right after this. So what is actually scope in Google Analytics? Now, there are many definitions for scope actually. Um, but for me uh, to visualize it, I often think of a scope as a net uh, that encapsulates something. So there's a beginning and an end to it and you're either in or you're out. So what does that mean actually in Google Analytics? It's important to understand that scope in itself is a concept how you view the data within Google Analytics. And this is made up by uh, Google Analytics itself and how the tool works. Now the definition of scope is important to understand within Google Analytics. So uh, you can look at the data in the correct way, interpret it and get the right insights out of it. So for that purpose, I have made up a little example here that will help you to understand the concept of scope in Google Analytics. So let's dive in. Welcome back to our beloved demo shop and here I have Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager installed. So every time I go to another page, a page you hit is sent on to Google Analytics and is recorded within the system. Now with this page you hit, there's actually more information sent over to Google Analytics as it might seem. These are actually the dimensions that are sent. So the properties that are attached to this page view. We can see them by using our GA debugger extension and opening up the developer tools where we can see what data was actually sent to Google Analytics. So for example, the AdSense ID, the language, the title of the page, all of these are dimensions that are sent onto Google Analytics. What we want to take a look at is the client ID. So the client ID is also referred as a primary key, which means that it helps Google Analytics to identify and connect different scopes. So where does this client ID actually come from? Once you enter the web page, Google Analytics will set a cookie, which we can see in the applications tab here under cookies. You can see that there was a Google Analytics cookie set with our client ID. So this is the ID that also gets sent over to your Google Analytics account. But scope doesn't really happen on the measurement side. Remember, we are just sending in page view data into Google Analytics. Scope happens on the processing side. So we need to take a look at how Google Analytics actually processes this data. And I came up with a little example here, which is my poor man's version of Google Analytics. And this is basically a Google spreadsheet that simply records our page views in a Google spreadsheet. So once I go on to the next page here, there's a new page view being recorded with two dimensions really. This is the page path and this is the client ID that gets sent over. Now, what does the client ID actually do? It identifies the user uniquely to the system. So every time I change the web page, we see that the same client ID gets recorded. Now, if I open up a new private browsing mode here and go to the same page, we see that a new hit was sent over to this spreadsheet, but with a different client ID. And if I click around here, generate some page views, we also see that data being recorded in the spreadsheet. Now, why is this useful? Let's say we are Google Analytics in this spreadsheet and we want to determine the different scopes. Now, there are three scopes that you can classify this data with. One is the hit scope, also referred to as the page view the session scope and the user scope. Now with this version, we can go through and actually categorize what counts as a hit or a page view in this scenario. Well, this first row here would be one hit or one page view, the second row as well, the third row as well, and so on and so on. So we can really just go down and say at any of these rows is a page view. So all of these different data points are scoped as a hit. Now let's go on to the user. And this is actually how Google Analytics defines a user in the system. And it's simply looking at the different client IDs that are present. So here we have one client ID, then we have another unique client ID with the 11 here, but all of the other ones are actually 
the same. So I'm just gonna connect them here. And let's make this a bit nicer. Give this a color. And then we have two one back here. So this is another client ID. Then we have another client ID, but this is the same actually as the one up here. So I'm gonna mark this, but it actually doesn't count as a client ID. So we won't put a one in there. And we also have a client ID right here. This one is also a new one. Let's connect this with a one. All right, so now we have our different users counted. So if we count down, we have one, two, three, four users from all these different page views that were actually generated. Now all we need to do is fill out the session and this gets a bit more complicated, but it's not that hard after all. So a session is defined within Google Analytics really as a group of page views that happen within a 30 minute window by default within the system. So Google Analytics would go in and actually look at the client ID first, see if this is different than before, and then would look at the time frame if this is the same client ID and see if they happened in a 30 minute time frame. So for example, here we have one session because this user only had one page view. Then we have another session that started right here. So this is number one as well. But then all the different other time frames need to be looked at as a time basis. So up until here, we have a 30 minute window. So these are scoped into one. And then we have the same client ID, but in a di different time, all within a 30 minute window again. So we can scope them right here. A new client ID. So a new session is started and they're all happening in one 30 minute window. Then we have the same client ID up here, but in a different time frame but if we go back we look actually that they happened all around the same time as the second batch here and within a 30 minute time frame so google analytics would say okay this is actually again a session that started but between 10:42 and 10:26 there's not a new half an hour so this will be scoped to the same session as before and then we have this new session with a new client ID. So this will also be one new session. So as you can see, we have now gone through the process of scoping our different data points, our hits into these different columns. And just to make this a little bit more present, let's make this green and this blue. So everything in blue is within the hit scope. Everything that's green is within the session scope and then the thing that's yellow is in the user scope. Now what Google Analytics then does is actually do a calculation. So how many sessions did we have? It will simply sum up the different sessions here. Then we'll go into the session scope and do the same for the session and for the user. So as you can see, we had really 33 page views generated, five sessions and for users enter the page. Now this is how Google Analytics interprets the data and calculates these metrics within the interface. This is just one set of metrics that is actually by default calculated within the processing engine. Now you might have seen with our GA debugger, we have sent in more information to Google Analytics. So for example, the screen resolution size or the location or the language. Now, these are obviously also recorded. And when we just input a new column here and say this would be, say we wanted to send over the language and input it here, then it's all the same with every page view that sends over. And these are actually page view or hit scoped. So every hit has its distinct language. And so this dimension, this property, of this data point is actually hit scoped. Now, there are other metrics that you are used to in Google Analytics. So when we go to this audience overview, you see, for example, the bounce rate. Now, how is the bounce rate actually defined? It's a metric that is calculated by looking at the sessions and seeing what session only had one 
page view. So if we would do that in the left session here, say bounce rate, then we would look at the sessions and we would say, okay, this actually only had one page view. So this is counting as a bounce. This session is also not a bounce. We have many page views in that, not a bounce, not a bounce, not a bounce. So we, in a whole, if you calculate this together, just set or sum it up together, we just have one bounce. And in the end, the bounce rate would just be a percentage between the relation of sessions to bounce sessions. So it's a 20% bounce rate. Now this is all calculated within the processing engine of Google Analytics and doesn't really get sent over by the tracking code itself. But I hope you now understand if you look at the metric of bounce rate, that this is actually a session scoped metric and the language or other data like time on site are hit scoped. So just to give you an example, we have the average session duration. Obviously this is session scoped. We also have the active user report. Now, obviously this is user scoped and we have our page metrics and these are obviously hit scoped. So this is what scope means in the context of Google Analytics. All right, I hope this made it a little bit clearer in your mind what scope means within Google Analytics. Now, there's actually another scope that we haven't mentioned in um, the demo part here, which is the product scope. And this is really about enhanced e-commerce tracking within Google Analytics. Now, you might run into these scopes when you set up a new custom dimension. So for example, uh, they ask you if you wanna have that hit scoped, session scoped or user scoped. And this is really just about the property, the dimension that you send in and how it should be attached to that data. So once you send in a um, dimension that is user scope, it will obviously be attached to the user and to all the different page views that you have, but also all the different sessions that you have. And you might want to correlate this with other user scoped data, user scoped metrics that you have in your system. So it's also very important to understand once it comes to building custom reports in the interface of Google Analytics and how you can correlate data within the interface. Now, does that all make sense to you? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below because this is also a few new concepts that I've dug up and um, try to explain them through the spreadsheet. So I'd love to hear from you, but also if you haven't yet, then subscribe to our channel right over there because we'll bring you new videos just like this one every week. Now, my name is Julian, till next time.